All right, Improvisation Center back again with another quick little video. This time, focusing on, as you could probably figure, the garden. So, uh, before we get started, don't forget to do all the normal stuff. The click, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know the deal. So, anyway, we're at the gate to the garden here. Where we have this little sign that more or less is for shits and giggles but going inside been doing some work up in here just like we've been doing in the other locations as far as landscaping is concerned you'd probably be familiar if you read the blogs that been doing gravel spreading and everything but uh <clears throat> this area used to be pretty overgrown all through here and utilizing some of our tools the electric bush hog the hedge trimmer saws weed eaters all that stuff i managed to chop my way through all of this mess and got it all cut down oh also the mower too but anyway got it all chopped down to just straight ground in some spots you can clearly see it's muddy bare spots and this is of course because of the irrigation system saturating the ground every day and causing it to well get mushy but anyway, one of the things that we used to have in the garden, if you probably see on some of these fruit trees, are little tire beds. And while some of these fruit trees are still alive, that are utilizing these tire beds, we had several that were either partially alive or dead, but the tires are still there. Also had some muscadines that, because everything was pretty much left to grow on its own, ended up getting tangled up in this one fruit tree here as well as these fruit trees. Well, we ended up digging up several tire beds, which are marked by these round spots right here, that after digging up the tire and removing the contents, all the dirt and stuff was mushed into the depressions that were left behind. So, had a couple over there, had one right here, had a couple over here, all gone. So. The next thing is, as far as muscadines are concerned, this one remaining muscadine, it's still here and it's still got a good amount of vine on it, but I chopped back a lot of it, especially the one muscadine that was right here. It was all in these trees right here. There's still some remaining vines in here that are obviously dying because they've been severed. But the muscadine plant in question is this one that's been transplanted right here with these two super long vines stretching all the way over here yep all this is from one plant right here so i'm gonna have to make a trellis in order to accommodate this super long vine and somehow set it up on this drum here which is probably gonna end up being taller than me to accommodate all that vine because i'd hate to cut it all up since all the foliage is at the end of the vine so yeah Muscadine. There's actually two muscadines in this drum right here, and I ended up salvaging those two from over there and over there. A couple other ones were just, they were just too, yeah, they, they, they just didn't look really good enough to be worth trying to save and dedicating a whole drum to them with the hope they might come back next year. But uh, they're gone, obviously, from the smoke over there. Yeah, there's a lot of crap that's gone. But, continuing on, the tire beds that were over here actually had a couple fruit trees. There was one tire bed over there that also had a fruit tree. I ended up taking another drum, as you can see, chopping it in half in order to accommodate a couple of fruit trees. And I took an old garbage can that had a hole chewed on the side of it because that can was actually used for chicken feed and varmints chewed a hole in the side of it. So... It's no longer good for housing feed, but that made it perfect to serve as a fruit tree planter. So there it is right there. If you're wondering why there's plastic dirt bags underneath these drums, it's because eventually I'll go ahead and put gravel down around all this stuff. And the bags will obviously help control grass and weeds from growing right up to the sides of the drums where I'll end up having to use weed eaters to cut all that stuff. Don't want to have to do all that if I can't avoid it. So, anyway, continuing on, 
we got this fruit tree right here that I said had muscadine vines all twisted up in there. Not really 100% sure what fruit tree this is, but I know it's pretty huge. And hopefully by doing all this maintenance on this stuff, it'll allow these trees to start to come back a little bit better. Because at the same time, I also took time to cut a whole bunch of dead branches and icky looking branches off the lower parts of these trees. That tree, this apple tree right here, it had a whole lot of uncontrollable branches everywhere. So I kind of neatened everything up. So... I'll still have some low-lying branches with which to gather apples if they grow. But it's at least neat enough that I can walk around here without getting smacked in the face or cut on the leg. Over here, that's that muscadine, but over here is another apple tree that I had cut down. Well, not cut down, I cut it up a long time ago because most of it was dead. As you can see, I chopped it up. I left it here because there were still a couple branches that had some green on it. I wanted to see if it might come back, but it really ain't doing anything. So there's a good probability this tire bed and this tree will be gone soon enough just as well, opening up the space furthermore. Now that depression you see right there with the water pool up in it was actually where we had a tumble composter sitting. We never got a chance to mount it on a slab or anything. It just sat there. Even though we've been putting stuff in there to compost, we never mounted the thing. I ended up taking that composter and moving it all the way over here by the dog kennel greenhouse. As you can see, it's sitting right over here, close enough here, because more than likely, this is where the thing's going to be used mostly as far as digging up compost to feed all the raised beds over there and inside the greenhouse. So it would make sense to have it close by my area of operations. So at the same time, moving it over here. I emptied this thing out in order to accommodate a lot of the drum planters. But uh, yeah, there's really nothing left in there and just a little bit of stuff. So I'll leave that in there as a bit of a mother culture to get the next batch of compost started later on. But uh, I took a lot of compost. I put it in this drum here at the bottom of it when I put the muscadines in there. So when I put dirt on top of it, it'll have a nice bed of compost with which to feed the roots put a little bit of compost in this blackberry drum right here and came on top of it with some dirt just as well also put some compost in these two half drum bed raised beds here that i built recently and topped it off with some topsoil dirt so they'll be ready for some plants just the same i also took a lot of compost put a little shovel full in each of these beds right here a little bit of everything put some in this half drum right here more and more and more ran out of compost for that drum because i ended up using some of the, the remaining compost for one of our fruit tree drums over here take a quick walk and you can see there's a lot of crap up in there and obviously I'll put more dirt in this drum here and that will help in helping this fruit tree recover better when it does come back next year because more than likely this thing's going to probably almost half die after being uprooted. It'll go into shock and most of the time these trees will come back in the following year. So that compost will help it do that. So as you can see, we got a wide open space right here. So we'll be able to more easily set up raised beds, hydroponics, really anything that we've been currently doing. More drum planters, all this wide open area. But at the same time, because of the slop, we're going to need a whole lot of gravel because we don't want to be stepping in slop all over the place. So, yeah, we're, us and the gravel guys are going to be real good friends for a long time because we're going to be getting lots and lots of gravel to spread out through this whole garden right here. And same thing over here. This used to be a old ground level raised bed such as that one right there using 2x6 or 2x8 boards, which have long since rotted. There's remnants right there. I cleared this area earlier in the uh, project and trim this fig tree a little bit just as well and this pear tree so this is another open space that's now 
free for my use in some future beds or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I got that. I have to get some more railroad ties so I could finish this fruit tree food forest kind of concept here, which centers around a couple of pear trees with some blueberry bushes. And I will put strawberries in here just the same when I fill it up with more dirt. So it'll be kind of a combination of different fruit producing plants. That's the same thing right here. Got a pear tree, some black uh, blueberries, and a few strawberry plants scattered around through here. These are going to be some areas that will need some maintenance done to them in the future just as well. But, uh, yeah, we got our other miscellaneous raised beds, hydroponics, drum planters, more raised beds of various shapes and sizes. Not even sure if there's anything on these vines here. But they're there. More stuff right there. Cat litter bucket raised beds. Half drum raised beds. Some unfinished hydroponic sewer pipe setups that I still got to finish. PVC pipe of that size is expensive, which is why this project here has been kind of slow to be completed. But we got plenty of half drum raised beds right here with sweet potato vines growing through all of them. Well, most of them. A uh, couple of little recycle bins that have been repurposed for strawberries. And already seen the greenhouse a million times. But that there, folks, is the garden. Already cleaned up for the most part and open for business. So until the next time, I will catch you later.